Morning guys, Jamie here from the Claude Harmon Performance Academy and we're still in isolation unfortunately. But after the overwhelming response to our free online lessons, one of the things I wanted to go through with you today was a couple of, couple of simple drills that you guys can do at home, whether it be with or without a golf ball. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk through four or five different things that you can do while you're at home, a couple of different things that you can practice, and then from there at least you can get a little bit of practice in no matter what kind of space you guys have. Okay, so our first drill, a very simple posture drill, and this can help absolutely anybody. There's no need for a golf ball or even a lot of space when it comes to doing this drill. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by taking our grip here, and we're going to just pop the club on our shoulder, rest it on our shoulder. And when I say rest it on our shoulder, I mean, really mean relax the shoulders down, almost as if you've taken a deep breath and your shoulders are just falling down into the joint. From there, that's our perfect position. So we want to really feel from there as if we're pushing our hips back. Now where a lot of people make the mistake here is as they go to bend into the ball, they'll really round from their upper back and they won't really get much hip bend or hip tilt as you go into the setup. So what we want to do here is push the hips back, even feel like you're rocking into the heels slightly. And then once you feel like you've pushed your hips well back behind your heels, I want you to bend your knees and then just try and find balance. So, very simple. Step one is just rest the club on your shoulder. Step two, push your hips back so you feel the weight go into your heels. Bend your knees or soften your knees a little bit and then try and find posture. And from there, I'm just gonna let you drop the club. And if you have a net at your disposal, you can hit a shot. A really simple drill that you can do just about anywhere. Okay, so drill two involves really creating a good solid takeaway. So for me, a solid takeaway is just having the club in the right position and having the arms and the body support the club correctly. Now, one of my favorite ways of doing this is with a single hand drill. So we're gonna go left hand only on the golf club. Our right hand can just sit down to our side. And what we wanna do is feel as if as we bring the club back to parallel, that we're in a position of strength. So what you should see is a little bend through your left wrist you should see the club pretty much directly in front of your hand and you should feel like you're strong and you're able to support that grip. If you feel like the club is well inside that line, you'll probably feel like the club gets very, very heavy in this process. If you feel like you've picked it up, you'll obviously see it pointing way out towards the wall. So the idea is if you were looking at it from here, I'm almost trying to bring the club back to parallel nice and slowly and almost point it straight down the line of the camera. And if I can do that correctly a couple of times, then I'm gonna bring my right hand onto it and I'm gonna try and feel exactly the same thing. So again, kind of pointing it down the line of the camera. And just to bring this club in a little bit closer to, the, to me, the toe will be pointing up, but we will have a bit of angle to the face. Again, some people can match that roughly to their spine angle, but it's a real simple checkpoint for your takeaway. So single arm drill really gets that takeaway in the right position as you go back. Okay, so drill three is all about just controlling the length of the backswing. This is probably the most common thing that we see with amateur golfers is where they feel like they need more and more power and ultimately the swing just goes past where their maximum range of motion is. So we're gonna use the left arm as a little bit of an indicator. And again, I'm gonna start this drill off with just the left arm. So I'm gonna bring that club back until my left arm reaches roughly parallel to the floor. And then once I have this, I'm gonna put my right hand on and feel what it is like for me to have the club in that position. Now we're gonna call that for now just top of the backswing. I just want guys to get used to the feeling of where that club is because once I put that in motion, they will almost always go past that point. So let's do that again. We'll put the left hand on the club, we'll bring the club back to parallel, we'll put the right hand on. And what you'll notice here is I really create a lot of structure through my shoulders and through my left arm. And that's something I really like to see in the golf swing. Now, if you have a net at your disposal, you can also kind of use this with the net. So what I would do to begin is get into your good posture, left arm on the club, bring it back to that position, right hand goes on, and then just tip the ball into the net. You don't have to hit it very hard, but it's a great way to just feel what the swing is gonna be like from that position. So let's do that one more time. Left arm on the club, bring it back into position, right arm on, and through again. Once you feel like you've done a couple of reps of that, you can start to bring this into 
a more normal swing or at least a normal starting position. So we're going to go two hands on the club, we're going to bring it back to the same position and swing through. And you'll see nothing here is at a high pace or a high tempo. Everything's very smooth, it's really aimed at getting the, the kind of form of the swing right and just being able to finish in a nice balanced position. Okay, so our next drill is all about the pacing and tempo of the swing. And the two areas that I always find people improve when they're doing this are number one, the transition and the balance of the swing. When you see people do this, swing, this drill, they really get a good understanding of how those two things should happen. Number two, I always find distance control, especially in wedge play, really improves because you start to get a feel and an understanding for what the actual pace of your swing is. So you can do this drill with or without a golf ball. I'm going to start it without a ball and then I'm going to begin to introduce a golf ball from there. So without a golf ball, what I'm going to start with is a 50% swing. This is just a nice smooth swing, still making a full length, but I'm just purely controlling the tempo. Now for most people, when I see them do this, their instinct is actually to go faster. So their 50% swing is much closer to probably a 70 or 75% swing. This ultimately causes them problems later on as we start to increase the speed in this drill. So let's go number two. Number two is 60%. So a little bit faster, not quite up on my full swing yet, but starting to get a bit of pace into the club. Now 70 to 80 is normally where I recommend people play from depending on their level. For me, I'd probably play closer to 80, but I, I'm going to do 70 now with a golf ball. And you can see, this would almost be as if I was hitting into a par 3, and I just wanted to take a little bit off the actual distance. So 70%. So again, a nice smooth tempo to that one. Last one, I'm going to go 80%. Now you can work all the way up to 90 and 100 here. 80 is pretty much my playing level, but I would encourage you to even try the 100 because you'll see just how hard and how fast it is and also how your swing reacts to it. So let's go 80%. This is pretty much what I would play at. Let's see. And again, starting to get a good feel for transition and balance of the swing. So try this at home, whether you use it with or without a golf ball. Work your way all the way up to 100 and see how your movement and how your balance changes as you go up through the gear. Okay, impact, probably the most important one of them all. But having said that, everything that we've done up to now really builds up to this moment. And believe it or not, it is something that you can practice and help your body get accustom accustomed to even at home. So what I'm gonna do is a simple impact drill. Now again, you don't need a golf ball for this. You might need a ball just to, to put down on the ground as a reference, but other than that, you don't actually need to hit a golf ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with the, the club in front of the ball in my normal setup but what I'm going to do is try and show my body what impact should look and feel like so I'll kind of start to open up my hips push my weight forward onto my left leg and you'll see the weight will come off my right leg now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two or three reps of that first of all one two three now you'll notice the adjustment on the third one I felt as if when I was doing the the first two my head was drifting forward a little bit on that third one, I kind of waited a little bit longer before my head went. So you may notice little things while you're doing this drill and try and just get a feel for what you think a really good impact would look like. It really helps if you film it as well. So if you have a camera, prop it up in your sitting room, get a couple of videos of you doing it, and even go online and you know, see what Tiger Woods or Rory McIlroy look like at impact. Now, I'm not expecting you to get exactly the same as them, but you may notice little things that stand out. Now, once I've done that drill a couple of times, I'm going to make a swing. So I'll even bring this into a routine. I'll start off with just the drill first of all, feel what impact's like, and then I'm going to make a swing and try and get through the ball in a similar manner. Now again, when you do this, I really want you to hold your finish. I really want to hold the balance. If you're at home and you haven't got space in your back garden to use a ball, you can do this just with swings. If you have a golf ball and you have a net, then great, you can do it just like this. We'll do one more rep of the impact position starting to feel a bit of a stretch through my left hip and then we'll make a swing and again a really simple drill that will not only help you get a little bit of stretch through that left hip but it'll also help you understand what impact should feel like 
Okay, our final drill is balance, and it was interesting seeing poor Carrington highlight this one the other day, hold your finish. It's one of the keys that I really just don't see enough with golfers. A lot of golfers really kind of, they're swinging at such a pace that their body can't handle it, their balance isn't there, and they fall all over the place. And this really does create a lot of off-center hits. So what we're gonna do for balance is we're gonna start on one leg. Again, you can do this at home with or without a golf ball. From that single leg, what we're going to do is put our right leg behind us. Now, if you're left-handed, obviously this goes the other way around. But for me being a righty, right leg behind. We're going to start off with some really small swings. So just kind of chip swings, turning and facing the target. So I'm looking at the wall as I finish, trying to hold that position. As we get better at it, what I'm going to do is start to make it bigger. Again, a little bigger, a little bigger. Again, trying to hold that finished position. Now you'll see I'm quite tight through my left hip, so I really struggle to hold that balance. So while I'm doing this drill, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn my left toe out a little bit. This may restrict the backswing slightly. I may need to make a slightly shorter backswing, but it makes my follow through much easier to hold the finish. And that's ultimately the goal in this. Now you can apply that same theory to the swing as well. So if we're doing that with a golf ball, what we can do is stand in there, left foot out, right foot behind, just a small little swing to start. Nice contact, nice balance. Slowly building it up to a bigger swing again. Right foot back. And then finally, let's do a normal swing with this. So again, if you're at home and you're indoors, you can't hit a ball, you can just do a normal swing anyway. With a ball, normal setup, nice swing through. Hold the balance. So there you go, some simple drills that you can do at home with or without a golf ball, all you need is a little bit of space to swing the golf club.